Namaste Galactic family and welcome back to my channel Indigo Angel. Come on into this dimension guys. Be sure to subscribe, hit that notifications bell and comment and share and put a big like on this video today as I do have such amazing, wonderful and beautiful wise guests today on my channel. This is Miss Maureen Walton and Maureen Walton is a researcher. She's a teacher. She is an artist of the womb wisdom school. She's all about reclaiming the blood masteries Andean traditions from pre-contact remembering the lost global arts of parthenogenesis and self conceiving, which are some things that I have been talking about on my channel with the last video that I just put out guys. So this energy is active right now on the planet on the earth the ancient tribal feminine wisdoms are coming back and being reactivated so i am so happy that you can be here maureen to have this discussion with me today and how are you today hello indy i am really happy to to be here to share with you i really admire your work um, really some difficult things that you're bringing forward that we have to know in order to um, go beyond that and begin to really see what we have to do. Yes, I have been diving deep down the wormhole of uh, feminine technology and also um, uh, more more of the oppression and some of the degraded and, and the implants and tags and, and the energies that um, I think a lot of women right now are working through at this time to clear um, from their energetic field. Um, but what I love what you have brought to the table is your explanation of the purity of the womb, um, how this part of us is actually already strong, empowered, and actually already healed. Um, yes. yes, well, that's what was really such... Uh, a beautiful aspect of this is that all the trauma and the difficulties we've experienced as women and humanity and men to right back into ancient times, um, it's all surrounding the womb, but not in the womb itself. Like it's like the womb is this little piece of heaven within us. Um, it's like the divine cosmic we are Kucha, as the Andeans say, or Sophia in the Western traditions. It's the cosmic source, the dark um, source of life, you know. And so there's, there's that power within us that we can access again um, as soon as we begin to... Now, I don't even think we have to wait until we clear everything. We can just start this work to um, begin to um, remember how to connect to the womb because it's just as um, active, as important as our brain and our heart. We could be using it daily, just like we do our heart and our brain. Yeah, so that brings us to maybe talking a little bit about the book that you are currently in publication. Um, so it's called The Good Darkness, um, Wisdom of the Womb Blood. And you said that this is actually a workbook. Um, well, yes, because, uh, because I am a, an artist, um, I pulled a lot of this in through my actual making diagrams and drawings based on the original Kiro um, diagrams and system. So there's lots of, um, we've actually left some blank pages in the book for you to make notes and to draw these diagrams yourself to help to really feel into it, you know? Um, so yeah, the, um, the Kiro Indians, hats off to them. Can I say a little bit about them? Yeah, absolutely. Let's maybe kind of start maybe from some of the beginning. Like what, uh, start with telling us a little bit maybe about you and where you're from and your connection to um, the Quiro. Sure. Well, it all began because, as I said, I'm um, an artist and I've been in many different 
I started out way back as a young woman in uh, animation, hand-drawn animation and fashion illustration. And then I got into the fine arts and then I became a mural artist. So again, cause I have that hand drawn and I can draw really and paint really quickly. I was, I began to get hired by the schools um, to paint mythology and um, any subject right on the walls in the hallways in the gymnasiums and I would bring the children in with me and get them working right on the wall with me and then do the finishing myself so that it looked professional in the end. So um, here I am living on the North Shore of Lake Ontario right beside the Mohawk Nation, the Tyendinaga Territory, and they are one of the six nations that formed together a thousand years ago to um, make a strong community of six nations called the Haudenosaunee, six nations peacemaker group. Um, and so they asked me to paint this story of the peacemaker mission. And lo and behold, it began with two virgin births. And not only that, but the other story they asked me to paint and which means I had to interpret it from my own self, right? Um, was the creation story. And um, that's called Sky Woman story. And she comes from the sky to earth and lands on the turtle's back. And she also self conceives. So I began to ask them about this and they, they didn't have much information on it. And I looked into the other six nations and there wasn't much there. They, some of them felt that maybe it was just a Christian overlay and not to pay attention to it. So of course that really got my interest going and I began to research. So, you know, over the years, um, I finally arrived um, in the Andes, not literally, but um, I met um, a teacher, um, a, a professor from California who had lived on and off for 10 years with the Kiro Indians. And they had only descended from the mountains um, 20 or 30 years beforehand. And they had this, these traditions with them. And one of them was the heart to womb tradition. And what is amazing is that they hid for 500 years in the Andes, keeping these traditions alive through practice. And so they totally, um, they, they went up the mountain just before the Spanish came. So this, these are pre-contact systems. Is that... Did that come across clearly that um, this yeah. seemed pretty amazing to me? That, because where else in the world do you find womb, womb meditations and womb spirituality? Like, so when I began to look into this system. And can um, I ask you, can I ask I you a quick question? Can you define um, pre-contact for the viewers today? Um. Yes, well, the, the Inca nation, I guess they could see into it what was coming and that there was going to be this great invasion from the Europeans and the Spanish, and they knew that they needed to protect their traditions. Okay. Um, and so they sent one of their tribes to hide in the mountains with all their sacred traditions. So not just the heart to womb system, but others too. And they, they told them not to come down until it was safe to do so, until the world was ready for these traditions again. And so they, they didn't come down until 1950. They, they went up in the 1400s and they didn't come back down the mountain. So do we have time I can tell the story how they found them? Yes, I? yes, absolutely. P please do. Okay, so apparently around 1949, 1950, 
the Kiro sent down a couple of scouts down the mountains and they were in a marketplace and there was an anthropologist that just happened to be in the market. And he overheard what he thought was an extinct language being spoken. And it was them. And that's how they were found. And so for the next quite a few years, um, some of the Inca went up the mountain to meet them. And then eventually some of them came down and began to share their teachings. And then there was a great um, formal celebration of welcoming them back to the Inca nation. And, um, and then they began to teach among their own people. And it wasn't until the 80s when my teacher met them and began to receive directly from them. Even then, that's like how many, four, 30 years later or so, even by then, some of the womb um, details were being lost because I received it only in skeleton form. Okay. And what, what does the skeleton form look like? What's the skeleton? What the skeleton mean? form was just the two triangles, the descending uh, cone of energy of the feminine that surrounded the heart and the masculine cone of energy that surrounded and protected the womb. And of course, as I've shared with you, there's a lot of depth and a lot more than that to it. Is that defined in any of the pictures that you have sent me? Um. Um, yes, um, the, there's always the two triangles, but I've drawn them in dimension. No, not that one, sorry. Okay. That's, okay. That, that's not really related. Um, okay, no worries. Um, I'm just wondering, is it uh, the one that's on the cover of your book then? Yes, that would be, no, sorry, that one's probably too hard to read. There's the other one there with the four cones in dimension. Try that one. Yes, that one. Okay. Okay. So there you can see that when I received it, it was just two triangles. And then, you know, I realized that those triangles, of course, represent living dimensional cones of energy. So you can see there the vertical system has the descending cone that, and, in, and then the um, masculine ascending cone, and they both meet and overlap right between the heart and womb. And then as I further studied and, and looked at other systems, I realized that the important piece that was missing was that horizontal energy from the Taurus system. And that's the two horizontal cones. So the horizontal is really the feminine energy and the vertical is the masculine. And if I can add, so those cones, if as you can imagine, are the central channels of the complete Taurus, Taurus systems that surround our body. It's pretty complex. It's hard to explain in a, in a short interview. I don't know if I have a picture there of the Taurus. Um, let's take a look and see what you sent me here. Um, yeah, there's one there where you see the woman is standing on the surface of the earth. Uh, in this picture or? In, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, this right here? Yes. Okay. So there you can see the Taurus of the earth and how those cones um, are perfect um, systems to pull in that Taurus, horizontal Taurus energy. So we've been really led away from focusing on the horizontal energies. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. This one, was, one. Yeah. this one was so fascinating to me. I've been looking at it for a long time over and over again, just trying to feel into it. I, I really resonate with this picture. Yeah. So there is another example of how we pull in those 
um, horizontal energies. And you can see the channel in the middle. Those are the cones, the two cones of energy are the actual central channel of that Taurus. And so if maybe this is a good time that I can share that that Taurus energy of the earth is not a passive, it's powerful. And it has come through the center of the earth, picking up all the metals and the energies of the gold and the silver and the inner earth energies. And where does that come from? That, I don't have a drawing here for you, I'm sorry, but the earth's Taurus, the earth pulls in the, those energies from the sun's Taurus. So you can imagine how powerful the sun's Taurus is. And where does the sun pull in that energy? Directly from beyond the solar system, directly into the cosmic void which is the feminine dark source of life, you know, the, the cosmic womb, the cosmic. So would you say if you could define the darkness or the good darkness or the void, it's the potential of all creation. Um, how, how, would you, how do you define that in your book? So I spend quite a bit of, time um, talking about the, the darkness as the divine feminine source of life, because again, it's been totally underground and only seen as the bad dark. So, um, you know, you, you just have to think of that cosmic void of outer space brimming with all potential that our very own wombs hold the same energy. I mean, how else could we um, bring a soul into that space if it wasn't pure, a soul to develop into a child? So the, the darkness is, um, you know, that life source. And we know that. We know that, uh, you know, when we plant a seed in spring, we have to put it in the dark and that it can't be exposed to the sunlight or it will die. Mm -hmm. You know, we know that. So why it's been demonized, I can't figure, you know, um, just like it. So that's why. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. That's what's so rich about everything that you're talking about. Cause it's shining light on things that have been demonized. Um, going back to, I think Atlantis, and the Lemurians, that's a lot of that I talk about on my channel is the original uh, invasions, the original predatory mentalities, narcissistic mentalities, reptilian mentalities um, that have come in and basically, you know, have taken all of the ancient teachings and have turned it into whatever they wanted to turn it into and have disregarded the original creation templates or stories of woman, which I feel are the original creation stories, but that is so lost. It's so lost. And well, yes, um, I think that that's why I came up with that quadrant, that picture there of the four triangles, because um, we do have bad dark. We have good dark and bad dark. I mean, I'm using the terms good and bad. Mm -hmm. And, but what let's, that's something else that they have hidden is that there's a good and bad light too. Like, don't forget the light can scorch and burn and um, blind you. So it's very, it's, I think people use the term light and ascension now, and light is being good in, in a very abstract way, and they forget it's anchored in reality you know, the sun can really do a lot of damage. So I think we have to rebalance. Uh, yeah, I agree. It's all about uh, right now, I think restoring the distortions and the gender principles. It's very out of balance to uh, an over extreme that is taking us into 
um, other sorts of agendas that are super nefarious and are very damaging now on the children. You know, the children seem to be the ones that come at risk when humanity can't get it together. <laughs> yes. Yes, my goodness. So the darkness we have to look at again is, as you know, beautiful and to sit, to, to make your own little dark space that you can sit in absolute dark with your eyes open and look into that darkness. And, you know, you begin, once you get over the programming, you can begin to feel that mother energy coming to you like a warm hug, you know, mm -hmm. very expansive. Yeah. So it's, it's all about primordial creation, this parthenogenesis technology. Um, so I would love it if you could go into as much as you possibly know or understand about that parthenogenic creation and maybe just describe what parthenogenesis creation is to everyone watching today as well. Sure, I'd love to. Um, so what I learned from the Kiro system that you begin to, um, after you pull your consciously or and unconsciously, pulling in those divine cosmic energies into your womb space and sensing them there. Um, that system is to help you move the cosmic energy from your womb to your heart. So really first the woman has to come to super consciousness or in darkenment um, before she can activate parthenogenesis. So the whole idea is that the womb blood now being totally divine and pure, holding no karma or ancestral bloodline, you're going to bring that to your heart. That means you're going to be flushing all the karma and ancestral bloodline influences from your heart, from your system. So it's like, if we can first get used to the fact that we have two systems of blood in us that make us very different from men, you know, we complement not one better than the other, just we complement. Mm -hmm. So we're these like this different species that has divine cosmic womb blood and heart blood. The heart blood's good too, but it carries, you know, a mix of energies. It's different. So it's different blood. It's very different blood. Yeah. Okay. So in order for women to reach super consciousness, we've got to flush out our heart blood and fill it with womb blood, like energetically. Energetically, but what I'm still learning is when that, that process begins to take place, you're, you're, you don't release very much blood at all. So it seems to be more than energetic. It seems to also decrease the amount of blood you lose. Um, in fact, two of the women practicing this with me for a few years now say that their um, the moon time is very, very light and there's a lot less discomfort. Mm. So it's, it's, a real, um, it's a real system that really works. And so if you move that energy to your heart stream and you know, you have to do this with the breath of fire and it, it will take a few cycles to be able to start activating it. Um, eventually, let's say that you're an expert and years have gone by and you're totally cleansed your bloodstream, then you would be ready for parthenogenesis. And that would be taking that blood back down with another process to the womb so that because there are good qualities, of course, in the heart blood too. So if you flushed out the negative and you're left then with the high heart blood and the womb blood together in the womb, it's going to be um, much more powerful. And then your high soul, your already enlightened soul is going to be attracted to your womb. It's going to find you along with your, you know, 
um, dedicated calling of, of an already enlightened soul. So the, old, the whole idea of parthenogenesis is that you're, you can, all those um, enlightened souls floating around out there can't find a womb, a, an enlightened womb to, to come to earth fast track in one incarnation. So, you know, if we do this work, it allows more enlightened beings to come to the planet quickly. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I don't want to go on and on. Or yeah. People. I think that in itself is, is a topic in itself um, that we could really go into and dive into. Um, the, the trouble and the difficulty I think that souls have had incarnating here, um, going yeah. into uh issues being i think that happened like again through the invasions where um we were ripped apart from our divine counterparts so do you think that i guess what i'm trying to say is a soul will not come in with karma if it's created through parthenogenesis creation versus if it has seed artifacts or if it's came in with through regular mammalian mating so to speak so that brings karma into the bloodline or into the soul so really the majority or the percentage of uh, incarnates here on the earth are carrying that uh, karma from incar incarnating through seed artifacts or through being through fertilization yeah because unfortunately the the male seed the sperm carries karma and ancestral so they we cannot bring an enlightened soul through mating with a man, plain and simple. But the men wow. were there, like, <laughs> sorry to be so dramatic, but it's not against men. I mean, look at in this story in, um, that happened right here, uh, the Peacemaker story, two parthenogenic women and like the men in, only five, six hundred years ago, you know, this was known in many places in the world. The men protected the women. The men were more, they weren't, they knew that in order to create, to bring an enlightened person in, they were just protectors. They didn't do more than that. Uh, in the Christian story, you can see that, you know, Joseph was a protector. Mm -hmm. He wasn't mating with Mary. So could it have been that the original invasion was solely about sexual drive on some level, like the drive to hunt, the drive to seek purity? Um, Are you talking about male? Or yeah, yeah, men. Because um, if we think about the time, I always go back to Atlantis first seeding and the invasions that happened upon the Lemurians. By the Draco, so I'm going. I'm going according to a a, a story or a mythology mm -hmm. um, that they that potentially that this was all about taking and raping females, okay, um, causing a lot of trauma, human trauma, collective trauma in the bloodline. Um, but could this, uh, you know, original um, bringing karma to the earth in general as a human species was from this yes. sexual drive of men. Yes, I think so. Um, and, and um, you know, uh, I mean, men were these amazing, from what I understand, these amazing, um, like they took that parthenogenic technology and built um amazing things in the outer world i mean that was their role um, the womb technology in the outer world are the dolmens and the pyramids and all these beautiful structures that are really divine technologies yeah. like the womb yeah so it's not like they didn't have anything to do yeah yeah and and, and to all the men watching i just want you to know that um I think it's about a different higher level of understanding creational energies and yeah. existence of life here on this earth. It's not about 
um, defining their importance according to like their role in sexuality and fertilization and creation. It's about understanding that their existence was at a higher level. So they were channeling that, harnessing the sexual energy and bringing it up to the crown chakra to create yes. higher, higher levels of spirituality on the earth. Yes, I think so. I mean, um, I mean, the same would apply for, for women too. It, it, it seems like where was sexuality in this, in this picture? Maybe it wasn't even there. I don't know. Yeah. I just, explaining what has come to me that um, the only way that enlightened beings can get to earth is through parthenogenesis. So we have to figure it out now. Yeah. Yeah. How, How do we, we teach that technology to the mainstream? <laughs> well, I think we can do it because it was only 500 years ago. That's what really blew me away wow. in places. It's wow. not so Shall I mention the story about Dr. Del Blair in Chicago? That, yes, um, yes, please do. He, he, um, he really inspired me, and he died in the 90s, 2000-something. But he still has um, some YouTube videos there, and um, he had a letter from a 17th century doctor, 1700s. Just is that during or just after the witch burnings, a French doctor, and he, this is when the men were just gathering their own path of the medical, their medical profession as we have it. Today, and in the letter, it said, we will no longer allow parthenogenesis. And that was 1700s. Wow. And I think, I guess that's a big part of what the witch burnings were about is, is silencing our abilities there. Wow, that is so deep. Um, <laughs> sorry. And, and, you know, I think that um, the Kiro and all these, you know, in Africa, like he also said the Amazons were parthenogenic, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and the last Amazons were fighting the French off in the 16, 1700s too. So we can reclaim it because especially being here on Turtle Island, because it's so recent, these things were alive. It's under our feet. You know, if we just listen to the land, I think we can reconnect. That makes sense, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, are you close to Turtle Island? You're. I feel I'm getting closer because, um, you know, I have my little dark lodge. I have a little woods that's um, an old growth. It hasn't been cleared, um, and you know, and also connecting with some of the Mohawks that are are more open. Um, you know, I'm just doing what I can to. Yeah, Listen. it's really interesting. I, I went on a show not too long ago called The Galactic Talk with a guy named Tino, and he kept bringing up Turtle Island, but I wasn't making the connections to it because I just energetically haven't tuned into it and have heard anything about it. So he's also in, okay. Can he's also in Canada. And according to um, the Six Nations here, they see Turtle Island as all of the, all the Americas, like all the North, Canada and USA. And if you look at the map, you know, you can see that up near Baffin Island is the head mm. of the turtle. Mm. And the center of the turtle's back is in the prairies. It would be interesting to have a picture of it. Do you have any diagram of Turtle Island or anything Sorry. we can look at? Sorry, I don't. That's okay. No worries. I'll, uh, I'll look for one and I'll maybe bring it up next time or, or something like that. But, um, yeah, it would be really cool to define, uh, define that. Well, just that, you know, we're on the land where first nations were vibrant and alive and these arts and many others were being practiced not so long ago. 
So it seems to me much easier to connect than if we go over to Europe or back to Lemuria or whatever, you know, it's right here and it's still vibrating in the land in my feeling. What was really interesting that you had told me about was that um, when we were talking about Machu Picchu, about the moon temple, and you were saying that there were actually technologies of the same parthenogenesis creation that was kept in Machu Picchu in the temples of the moon? Well, I feel that this um, hero heart to womb system is, it is from there. Um, it is, it is the same one. And my feeling was that it possibly, where did they get it from? And my feeling was yeah. that's where I thought you may, um, have some insight there because, yeah. and the Anshar live under the Andes, right? Um, I don't know much about the Anshar, but possibly, you know, they are our, uh, sisters <laughs> that are helping it come out this heart to womb. Okay. Yeah. I don't know too much about the Anshar either. I'm going to have to look more into it. I feel really called to look more into it um, to understand more of this technology and spiritual primordial energy behind all of it. I think it's really interesting that it would be solely coming from Machu Picchu, given that it's the sacral chakra of the world. I see. Yeah. Yes, I see. Right. Um, hmm. Yes, well, that's probably where it would first emerge, but I think it is over the whole globe, right? Because yeah. um, in my research over almost 14 years there, um, uh, I found the symbol come up with Pavarti in India on a copper yantra, the same symbol. And I also found something similar in the Norse with the Vikings. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it is a global system yeah. because I think parthenogenesis was pretty common. Yeah, it's the original ancient way of creating. I think so. Yeah. It really, truly fascinates me. It really does because it takes me back to, I look at things on a galactic level and I believe that this came in with the Pleiadians. Machu Picchu is a Pleiadian Stargate location. I see. And the Pleiadians brought the 24th chromosome to the earth and brought forth the spiritual core human core of the of the human being when they came energetically through crystal seed forms over 200,000 years ago and so i feel that they brought that they were the celestial energy behind parthenogenesis on some level i'm sure i'm sure they're the the masters of it yeah and you know they want us to remember. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I think we'd be a lot happier. <laughs> yeah. I feel what really has to clear is our perceptions of sexuality. Like, if we were to take this on a level of the mainstream, the over sexualization of the yes. feminine. Um, yeah. The, the pornography industry. I mean, if, if they're, if they're going to, um, <laughs> I know, sorry, I'm going in some directions here. If they're going to, um, you know, reverse the decision of Roe versus Wade and ban abortions, well, I, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm valuing that decision right now because I, I can see the um, importance yeah. of shifting the collective mentality to the uh, value of life. Yes. But I also think things like the porn industry, like we need to um, also, you know, stop things like that because it turns it into some sort of addiction or some sort of an obsession or some sort of um, way that people are just numbing pain and wasting time. 
and um you know not not um connecting to their soul to their spirit that's just how lost one is um to the divine sacred energies there's so much to to undo there or let go of because um even myself and my small group when we started studying this we assumed at first that for a woman to self-conceive and redirecting those energies was an orgasmic experience and as we got into studying we realized that the womb itself is not connected to sexuality or even Mm -hmm. like like the, it's like the cervix, cervix separates like the womb from any kind of um, earthly experience. So um, then we had to admit that, wow, this app doesn't even include um, orgasmic experience at all. Right, right, right. Um, it's really, so, really interesting. Um, I have been looking at the Yggdrasil or... I've made these connections so that you have the universal tree of life. The universal tree of life is the placenta. Well, you see the universal tree of life in the placenta, but then from there, it kind of turns into the Yggdrasil. And from the Yggdrasil, they have these nine worlds or eight gates that one can access. So it's interesting you say that the gates are accessed through orgasms or spiritual orgasms can open up uh, gates inside the uterus of creation. I've kind of been seeing some of that as well. Have you heard of the gates inside of the? Yes, uterus? yes. My friend is a uh, that does this practice is uh, was a ta- is a tantric teacher, and she was all about the gates. But she's the one who explained to me after she'd been practicing the kiro, she said the gates and the orgasmic is not part of. Mm. so you know it's still we're still working out details and we yeah we, you know i'm inviting your community to to help us complete this i mean we're almost there but i'm not saying i have all the answers you know yeah 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 i i understand it's so complex and there's so much to it and i think it's for each one to ex- experience different levels and layers of the activation within it through their own journey. And um, I really appreciate you coming on today and telling us all about this today. I'm telling you, it's just so aligned to everything that I'm doing right now. Um, Great. I wanted to take a second to just talk about also your um, Kickstarter. So I'm just going to screen share that really quick as well. Oh, thank you so much. Yes. Um, yes. Well, I'm, I'm really happy that um, I've had such um, support and um, the, the estimates I got for printing and editing and all that have gone up a bit, but I'm so any little bit of help um, from community is appreciated to get the book out to you and Part of the Kickstarter is um, um, an audio of the complete meditation, um, as well as the as the book. And can I briefly mention the the other part of this uh, uh, project is that I have a beautiful granite erratic on my property, right beside a little uh, waterfall. Is I just have two acres, uh, wooded acres, and I am going to have the names of the um, Haudenosaunee, Haudenosaunee virgin birth mothers, um, a plaque engraved into that rock, so they'll never be forgotten again. Um, not even the Mohawks have commemorated them. So I thought, well, I'm going to do it, you know. And um, so that is also costing quite a bit to get done. But for me, that's really important to have that yeah. done. Wow, that's incredible. You are so aligned with their spirit and their energy. You must have been one with them in a past life and been parthenogenically creating with them because you hold your a wisdom keeper. And um, maybe something has inspired me because uh, it started out painting those murals. You know, I, I really 
called something in there. <laughs> I don't think they realized, you know, that um, hiring an Irish woman was <laughs> going to do this. But I'm all about those honoring those mothers, you know, that brought in the peacekeepers. You'll have to look into the story of the peacekeepers. It's a very, very powerful mission. Very important mission. And I just want to say, guys, if you would like to uh, support Maureen um, with the publication of The Good Darkness, you just want to go to uh, kickstarter.com forward slash projects forward slash woo magic forward slash The Good Darkness and make a donation. She has seven days left to go. Um, and I'm sure you can, some of that's going to go towards the commemoration of honoring them as you said so that's amazing and I love what you're doing that's so beautiful um I think you are truly an accelerative energy that is here to shift the divine feminine's perspective of all of the potential that they have within them and so oh thank you and thank you for your work and I hope we can continue you know to collaborate um, and move this work forward and help women to open up to their, the power of their wombs as this soul place of the home of their soul, you know, cosmic yes, soul. Yes, 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 yes. I've been really connected to my womb lately. I've been connecting with the pure divine Sophia energies. I've been taking all of my manifestations and placing it down into my womb. And I haven't done that before. I haven't worked with my womb more directly. Um, I've worked with my sacral chakra. I've cleared my sacral chakra. I've activated my sacral chakra, but you want to know what? I honestly feel that I have oppressed it because of my distortions with sexuality. And so I feel now I'm at a place that I'm able to go down into my womb from a place of purity and divine alignment and start using that for our manifestation and creation more so than looking at things and with my distortion, so to speak. And I think that's taken a long time to get to that place. <laughs> yes. To find that purity within you. Yeah. It's that, you know, can just expand once. I think once you, once you find that kind of diamond shape where they all converge, um it yeah. is it's going to just expand and yeah please. i love i love the diamond um it's amazing it's i yeah. see it i see it as a part of a um a higher capacity of ascension capabilities that the diamond network within us um takes us into higher evolution of our spirituality and our ascended mastery and um so I, it's interesting that the diamond network is inherently so built into and the it's sacral part of us magnetic convergence convergence point and yet at the same time um when you when you are moving into it it's expansive it's like cosmic expansion it gives you the bigger picture which seems to be the feminine, where the masculine is the concentrated, you know, point of logic and structure, and um, you know, and the feminine is this bigger picture. So we are perfect complements together, you know. Yeah. How did I get there from the diamond, anyway? <laughs> <laughs> um. So if someone wanted to purchase your book when it comes out um would they go to your website to do that when you launch it and when do you expect to be launching that yeah thank you it's um in final editing and i'm hoping actually next week i'm sending it to the printer and um i will um have it of course on my website here um, of course, and then, okay, so I'm getting 250 hard copies first so that I can send the rewards uh, to all the Kickstarter people. And um, 
then I'll have an ebook, you know, available on my on my website and links. And um, but I, I'd ha I'm happy to send hard copies too if people want to contact me from my website. Now, is there a certain amount of donation that one would need to make to get a hard copy from you? Oh, I think um, I think there I have um, fifty or sixty Canadian. Okay. For for, um, for a book. Okay. Awesome. So if they make yeah. a fifty to sixty dollar donation here at Kickstarter, they get a hard copy sent to them with a video as well. You said, okay, with uh, an audio of meditation. Okay, an audio of meditation. Okay, awesome. I love this so much. I love this project. It's really needed at this time, and yeah, yes, it's really important right now because of what's happening in the world in the bigger picture with, um, you know, we didn't even, we didn't mention the, the AI, of course, that's separating us from our soul nature. Yes. And the whole idea of this is in souling, it's gonna deepen our soul power so that the, the AI uh, and implants and all that cannot affect us, cannot separate us from our soul nature. So that's yes. another reason I think that it's timely. So uh, maybe to the viewers today, what do you think that we can do as individuals to strengthen the connection, maybe on a daily base or on a community basis with helping others to strengthen that connection and bring people back into maybe pulling away from more of this AI integration, more back to the purity and back to organic nature? What do you think people can do? to strengthen that within self and with others? I think the darkness is key to find a, um, a dark place to be at, at night with it's quiet and, you know, hopefully in nature, even, but even in your, your room, if you can pull the curtains and have absolutely darkness so that you can just sit with your eyes open and gaze into the darkness. And that really fast track helps you connect with your soul nature i believe and um it's very with your eyes open in total darkness it's quite almost it's almost trippy you know you start getting uh, floating colors and all kinds of sensations that are very beautiful it's not scary dark <laughs> and um and having of course bare feet in the ground as much as you can and just little things like that and then thinking of your womb and thinking of those torus, those horizontal mm -hmm. energies being more powerful than the vertical. So you're, you know, well, let me, in closing, just mention the, the belly dance and all the native dances are always sideways motion, swaying the hips, scarves. This is all attracting in the horizontal. So we knew this, wow. you know. Wow. Yeah. So, so do this hor slow horizontal mo. dancing. Slow mo, okay. horizontal dancing in the dark. That's what we need to do. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this too for the masculine, since we did kind of uh, come down on them just maybe a little bit, but we, tr we tried not to. Um, how can they best connect to the womb energies? Um, Men? Mm -hmm. um, so again, um, well, you know, I think if they're studying the, the uh, dolmens and the pyramids and all these beautiful structures that men have made through the ages, um, you know, it, it increase if they're focusing on like they can use that system too, and they have that central diamond, they just don't have the womb to store it, but it passes through them right? We can hold it, but it's not that they can't attract it. And um, these, these practices enhance your clearest, right? So for the women and the men, so the men are going to, with this practice, develop their telepathy and develop their, their clairs, 
there are all the different levels of um, clairvoyance and psychic abilities. So that will really help them and attune them to, you know, wow, remember how they, how they built these beautiful yeah. structures that yeah. were connected to their inner feminine, you know. It's, I, I see it's, it's such a, um, the sexual misery programs are, they run deep. And I feel like that in itself is such a veil that, yes. that takes the power away from masculine's ability to be creative and go higher into their spiritual evolution. And There's, deeper. Yeah. 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 Uh, yes, I guess you're right. There's a lot. Well, maybe we can, maybe we can do another little talk another time and focus more on that. Yeah, that would be good. I think, I think I would like that. I think everyone watching would probably like that. And um, so I just want to say thank you to you for being here today. It was lovely to have this conversation with you and everyone watching. Thank you for being here and go check out Maureen's website and make a donation to this book. If you um, want to help the divine feminine really, and the masculine discover Parthenogenesis creation, again, the ancient wisdom of the Kuros and the Amazons and all of um, the original creation technology that existed here on the, this earth. So um, thank you for bringing this uh, information forward and I hope you have a beautiful day. Thank you everyone for watching and take care. Okay, thank you. Goodbye.